So here we are with the camera that shall go unnamed in a super secret location in beautiful downtown Charleston, South Carolina. Well, we're going to try to do some handheld high res mode images. We're going to go ahead and see how this operates and see what we can come up with without anybody seeing us. So as we get ready to get going here, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. I'm running the 12 to 100 M Zuiko Pro lens. It's also image stabilized. So we've got dual image stabilization, which is absolutely fantastic. One of the things that you're going to notice is when I photograph something, I mean, if you take a look at this, I mean, this is how much stabilization we've got going on here. I mean, look at this. The minute we lock in stabilization, that's how much stabilization we have. Ah. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? But again, I mean, I just absolutely love the way this camera is designed with the cutouts here for your hand. Never realized it until I went to shoot with it and it's absolutely perfect. Everything fits just right in the hand. And again, the buttons being identical, the layout from horizontal and vertical, everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. Dual joysticks on here. This is absolutely a little dream. I just got finished shooting with it down in Daytona International Speedway for the Roar Before the 24, the qualifying for the Rolex 24-hour race. And incredible. Weather, doesn't matter what, the tracking on it is just stupendous. So let's see what we can do out here. Let's have some fun. In here, we're gonna do a handheld high-res shot of the front door here. This is pretty spectacular. That's all there is to it. It's processing away here. We'll see what it does. It's busy. Yes, there is no noise. It's all electronic shutter. And, uh, oh my goodness. We have detail. So this is pretty cool. So you just basically set it for high-res high mode and you can switch between tripod or handheld. There's a little hand symbol in there, just pops up. So we've got this, so we're handheld high res, and let's see what, what else we can get. I think we can have some fun with this. One of the things that is also nice about the new camera is linked orientation points for focus. So when I go into the vertical, it's where I left it in the vertical. When I go back into the horizontal, it's where I left it for horizontal. So if I'm doing portraits, it's always up where I want it. And when I'm doing landscape, it's always where I want it there. So I don't have to keep refiguring where to put the uh, focus point. So right now it's feeling really good. This is, this is pretty amazing here. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Since we're using the, uh, the 12 to 100, it's equal to a field of view of 24 to 200 millimeters on a full frame camera. Full frame camera is kind of a weird misnomer anymore. Everything is full frame. It's the frame of the image. So let's see what we've got here. We've got some beautiful Corinthian columns here. And there we go. Let's let that do some thinking about it. What it actually does is it takes 16 images and combines them together to form one. It'll give me a finished 50 megapixel JPEG. Uh, I believe it's 80 megapixel raw and 50 megapixel JPEG. But uh, from what I know, the boffins are, are getting me information as they go. But uh, we don't have the final firmware. That'll happen on the 11th. And of course, by the time you see this, this should be on the 24th. So let's go ahead and do another shot of these columns here and look for the detail in this. Absolutely dead silent. I love it. You know, the funny thing is, is I've never found myself needing to use high res. The standard resolution on this is great. We make five foot prints and I don't have any issues with it. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it back off of high res here. And we're just gonna go back to single. And we'll get some shots around here. We'll do some comparison shots. So exactly the way we did that one, let's do it in standard mode here. You can hear a little bit of a shutter click on that. We'll see what happens here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go back to aperture priority. That's my favorite. So we'll shoot an aperture priority here. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shoot it about F5 here. Let's go ahead and do that. And go back over to here. So I really don't have to shoot at a really crank down aperture. I can shoot pretty much wide open. F4 is wide open on this. Well, let's keep continue walking around, see what else we can find. All right, so let's try this out. Let's see what sort of detail we get out of this. These fences here, you know. All right, we'll let it do its thinking and see what we come up with. Again, I want to try to do a comparison to see if it makes a difference between shooting in the high res or the standard mode. So we're going to go back in here, take it back out. Let's try this again. Basically same shot without the high res mode. Definitely a little noisier with the mechanical shutter. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, yeah, with all the other noise around here. But again, working with this camera is, is just a delight. Everybody says, oh, it's so big. It's not as big as a 1DX Mark II or a D5 or anything else. It's actually quite small comparatively and light. So when I'm shooting with this, it just, I just love how nice and balanced it is. Everything works out well. It's a good time to shoot. Right now, we've got some beautiful light happening here. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Just gorgeous. Well, I switched over to one of my favorite lenses of all time, the 25mm 1.2 M Zoico Pro. Absolutely love this lens. On the Mark II body, I was hand holding regularly at a half a second with no problem, shooting wide open, getting beautiful results. Right now, we're going to see how, how far we can really push it as the evening gets darker and darker here. But uh, it's, it's just a delight to operate and use. Shallow depth of field is phenomenal. To give you an idea, you know, people say, oh, you can't get shallow depth of field. Well, you'll take a look at these images here in a second. and You can see how much shallow depth of field we've got. It's actually kind of nice. All right, let's carry on. doorways around here are really fantastic. Everything. This ironwork is amazing. A, there's a lot of ironwork that had to re be replaced after the war. They had gone ahead and donated, a lot of homes had donated their iron to making of cannons and cannonballs and stuff during the war. So a lot of the iron that you see these days is new or newer, but every now and then we'll come across some place that has the original ironwork. We're going to go ahead and we're going to swing this closed just a little bit here. Let's get a shot of this. This is awesome. With that nice red door in the background. Beautiful. You know, we could even go ahead, since we're going to be going down to the prettiest street in the area, Legree Street, I think we may go ahead and switch over and put the 7 to 14 on. Get some wide stuff here just to have fun with it. See how low we can handhold. So let's take this puppy out here. I just love the fact that these lenses are all so small for what they are. Being a 1.2 aperture lens, that one is just tiny. This one is an f2.8 constant, 7 to 14, basically giving you 14 to 28 millimeters on a full frame. But it is just an absolute joy to work with. I photograph everything from the interior of vehicles to aircraft, to, uh, homes and whatever, and it's just a sweet little lens to have on. So let's see what we can do. I've got my aperture locked down to two, or actually let's go ahead and set it up so we're locked down at, uh, what do you think, five, six. Let's go to five, six. We're gonna lock down at five, six. Our ISO is cranked down to 200. Let's see what we can do here. Actually, we might even try the front of this one. Let's try this. Just to give you an idea how wide this is, this is fantastic. I've actually got the entire front of the house in, standing right here. This is magnificent. All right, we're going to continue on. Okay, well, this ought to be fun. Beautiful sword gates here. I'm going to try to photograph this handheld high res, but I'm going to shoot at 1.2 just because we can. And let's see what happens here. This is beautiful. Let's go ahead and get ourselves set up there. There we go. We got both flags in it. 
We'll go ahead and do one of that as soon as this processes. I'm also shooting RAW plus JPEG since I have no way to convert the RAW files at this point. So we're going to go ahead and let it process here real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch back on over to standard mode. Standard mode, here we go. F1.2. And let's do a comparison of those. I think I'm also going to get a detailed shot of the gates over here. So we're going to wander over here by the gates. Actually, I like, a, like this as a horizontal. These gates are awesome. Let's back up just a touch. All right. A couple of standard ones. We'll switch back over into the high-res handheld. Let's see if it makes any difference here. And of course, we're shooting at 1.2. What could go wrong? <laughs> All right, let's continue on. It's starting to get nice and dark. What you can't see, because I'm sure that the uh, video is showing it much lighter, it's getting really dark here. The uh, gas lamps are, are lit. Things are looking beautiful. So we'll continue our walk. We've got a little bit more time to go before it's too dark to even see. Let's carry on. Okay, well, we've had a great evening out walking about uh, downtown Charleston here in the historic district and having an absolute blast with the camera that shall not be named. But uh, again, taking some of my favorite lenses out, the uh, 25 millimeter 1.2 Pro, the 12 to 100 F4 Pro, and the 7 to 14 2.8 Pro. Perfect for walking around down here, getting wide angles, getting close details, uh, ultra sharp things. And uh, I'm hoping that you're gonna like what, what you see when we get done processing them. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you at the next segment. Thanks.